And we are live. Welcome back to the manor. Julian McBain here, and today we are hunting Kerberos for fun and profit. Well, hopefully profit. Mostly fun and skills. And it's a challenge. But as we head out to where we're going to be hunting, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the manor. Make sure you take a moment and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million <laughs> subscribers, <laughs> one subscription at a time, so make sure you subscribe. Wow, I tripped over myself there. James Jim Big. I'm going to shout out James Jim Big. He is actually in one of my favorite YouTube videos by Delusionist, who unfortunately, I don't think he makes videos anymore. He hasn't put out anything in quite some time, but... He he put out one video about trolling Ubers at the oil rig, and James Jim Big was there. I just, it's, it's, an, it's an entertaining video. I go back to it when I need a laugh. So yeah, now that we're all done with uh, Mayhem, and migration has not started yet, we're going to be hunting Kerberos. Building up the mission near. My goal is to finish off this mission, hopefully, before we move on to Cyrene. But if not, we'll, we'll be coming back. We always come back to Calypso. You can't not come back to Calypso. It's the capital planet of Entropia Universe. And it's where the biggest market is, too. I've already finished the Berry Cled Challenge. That's all the way up. I mean, I can always continue grinding them, but I want to get my other ones done and get all of the skill bonuses. Oh, don't be shooting someone else's mob. He's Okay, apparently he's... I don't know. He was injured. I'm probably not going to get anything for this. Nope, didn't think so. So yeah, um, I actually didn't really come in with a top of, co of conversation tonight. I tomorrow's video is on um, Nil Satis Nisi Optimum. I know I talked a little bit about that in today's McBain moment, so I won't delve into that. Although. I am, frankly, internalizing it to the best of my ability. Collected my land deed and land area shares income, and it wasn't as good as last month, but it was still, it was, it was pretty standard. It's not surprising it's lower because I don't own any Calypso land deeds, and it's mayhem. And I'm sure it's going to be soft in July as well because of migration. But, you know, that's, that's the way it works. I still got respectable returns. Dumped them into more shares. That's how you do it. Hey, cat. Yeah, you're right. It did. It was nuts. Did you get the big thunderstorms up there in your neck of the woods? Busy out here today. Becomes too. Maybe we'll go a little bit deeper in. Like this, this whole area is loaded with Kerberos. I'm sure we can find another part of the herd. I'm using up this ELM B, uh, BLP weapon, which I guess I I could have sold it and made quite a bit off of it, but I need the skills. I wanted to try it out. I don't usually get to use the um, weapons out of strong boxes. Okay, that's fair. It's 
staff. Okay, holy crap, it's been a while. So, for those who are on stream, Steph is my cousin. And I believe you have a, a Twitch channel, don't you, Steph? Yeah, if, you, if you're still doing the Twitch thing, drop a link. You know, it's interesting. I've been... Uh... Okay, yeah, excellent. Um, hey, lurking or not, glad to see you on. Thank you for coming. And uh, drop a link to your Twitch channel, please. So, please, if you have the opportunity, go ahead and uh, support Stephanie. Speaking of which, it's been a while since I've caught you live. I'm doing well. Um, you know, life is life is definitely 2020, but <laughs> I'm doing, all things considered, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I don't think we've seen each other in, what, 20 years? Which is ironic, because you're not that far away from me. Last I checked. <laughs> Um, my son is now 12. Very, very 12. That's fair. It's a hard it's a hard grind. It is a hard grind. And that's true for anyone who decides they want to try being a content creator. You know, I I know a lot of people watch the replay over the live stream itself. If you decide you want to be a content creator, I encourage you to do so. But understand, it is a lot of work. A lot of work. Sourcing the content, curating the content, making the thumbnails, which I know my thumbnails are pretty basic. I mean, hell, I put them together with screenshots and Microsoft Paint. And I know I've got friends who are probably going to razz me for that because I have the program GIMP. I just haven't taken the time to learn it. I have a three-day weekend coming up. Maybe I'll do my best to do that this weekend. Um, but... Just coming up with the content, what you're going to do. It's it's a challenge, and it's a lot of work. Oh, hang on, guys. So, yeah, no, and again, I wholeheartedly encourage you to do so because it lets you express your creativity in a, in a fairly unique way. I mean, okay, so it's it's a lot more common now than it was, say, 15 years ago. I mean, heck, I re I'm pretty sure I actually watched the first video on YouTube, and it took 30 minutes for it to buffer on my dial-up internet connection. Thank you, Cat. That's good to know. I might hit him up on that one. Take him up on that one. Let's use our English properly, Julian. So yeah, no, this is a this is a great creative medium, and for it's for more than just for video games. You know, just doing. I mean, you, I'm sure that a lot of the people here have watched at least one of my McBain moment videos, and it's just, frankly, it's me blathering for seven minutes, but, you know, I, I make, I take, 
content that I find online. Specifically, I take quotes because uh, for my for my nine to five, I actually have to put quotes on the company Facebook page, and I actually write those down in a notebook. And this is all boss approved, so I'm not doing anything against the rules. Um, benefit to working for a small business is that sometimes your boss will let you do two things at once, and I just write them in a notebook and. I take my favorites and I make a seven minute uh, speech on it twice a week. And that's what, you know, that's what I did this morning. And that's what I do on Fridays as well. And nothing to do with video games. There's a joke in there. I just know it. So, but no, absolutely, Kenrick. I will, I will likely be taking you up on that once, uh, once we can all gather once again. Which hopefully won't be too terribly long from now. But at this point, gods only know. Still waiting to find out what July brings on the bingo card, because I think the aliens are scheduled for August. You know, we, we thought we had a hit with a T-Rex, but it turned out to be from a satire site. <laughs> I have to admit, it's interesting fighting with a weapon at this level again. It's been quite some time since, you know, I wasn't reducing the weapon type I was using. I'm, I'm actually at my limit for short blades. It's an SB20. But what this is letting me do is grind out my damage skills because the, the short blades, the knife fighter, the damage skills move, uh, ex are... You gain experience in the damage skills faster than the hit skills for Knife Fighter, as opposed to Long Blades, where you gain hit skills faster than the damage skills. Well, as it happens, they contribute to each other's skill pools, so if you do both, you're actually raising both skills better. And so, I find that to be very useful, so I'm trying to get my Short Blade skills up. And I believe it's essentially the same with pistols versus rifles. Rifles focus on hit, pistols focus on damage. Now, I don't think it's a it's a one-to-one -one comparison there, especially since a firearm operates significantly differently from a blade. Although I'm here to tell you I have seen a dagger do some serious damage to someone who's possessed of a sword. Like, firsthand, as the recipient from Cat. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, no, I think that, I think there's a, a, a significant comparison there. I would, I would like to figure out power fists in this game because they're not, they're not well utilized. I don't even know that there's a progression of them. I think they were just something that they came up with. They wanted to try and they just never developed Either that or there's so few users of it, the crafters just don't build the blueprints. And now the blueprints are so rare, it's hard to find a crafter that has one to make one. But, you know, that's that's one of the things about being in a real cash economy game is that because real money is a thing, players are going to focus on the things they enjoy doing and the weapons that they have 
uh, dedicated themselves to to leveling up. And the more demand there is for a product, the more people that are going to spend the resources to build the product and put it to market because they can charge for it. Well, not only can they charge for it, but they can, they will almost, they'll have a better guarantee of making the sale. And that's how crafters make their money is they sell the stuff they build. And so that supply and demand curve, if you need an economic model that shows how the supply and demand curve works, this is it because it's an actual supply and demand curve. It's all real. You know, there's no artificial inflation. Uh, oh, hi. There's no, well, I can't say that. There's a small amount of artificial um, movement when Mindark tries to rebalance the game by, uh, like when they came up with Synthetic Mind Force. They completely disrupted the economy because they did it to rebalance part of the game, which made sense. But it also fucks with all the crafters. So you got to be careful about stuff like that. And being as this is one of maybe three real cash economy games that are actually released. And yeah, you've got Virtueverse, and I'm really looking forward to that game coming out. But it's not out yet. It's, it's still in alpha and early access. And I am, full disclosure, I'm a backer. I'm doing the early access. Um, as soon as the backers early access comes out, I'll be swapping from Entropia to Virtueverse for that. In all likelihood, I'll, I'll be switching either Fallout or Entropia. I haven't decided yet, but it's it's probably going to be Entropia because of a different type of content um, for the duration of the backer test and then the um, early access period. And then once the beta is out and the, and the real cash economy section goes live, then we'll cons I'll consider it a release. And we'll see what happens, because it's a very dynamically different game. And the whole economic model is different. Well, for the sake of, like, cost-to-play ratio is much smaller. There's no global system. It's just a much different game. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I want to see what they do. Um, again, full disclosure, I am a backer. And so, you know, I've thrown... A, a modest amount of money behind it no more than like a final fantasies or world of warcraft subscription but i, I want to see where it goes and i'm going to continue to make videos of that as well and uh, i want to see how it compares to this one and now keep in mind entropy universe is a very well developed economy because it's been around for 17 years pretty sure it's yeah because it was 02 was it 02 i think it was 02 maybe it was 03 Come to my rescue, Wikipedia. This is this is the benefit to having two computers running. January thirtieth, two thousand and three. January thirtieth, two thousand and three. Which means it is seventeen and a half years old. As of today, in fact. So it has a very well-developed economy. It's a, it's a fairly well-balanced game. And yeah, they're, they're making improvements, quality of life adjustments. I've gone through a lot of the more important updates to this platform as it's come, as they've come, and I intend to continue to do so. But I am anxious to see a completely different take on the concept of a real cash economy. And you know what? It could be awesome, and it could be crap. So far, what I've seen has been pretty good. Does that mean I'm going to be giving up an Entropia universe? Hell no. I have put way too many hours and dollars into this game. <laughs> Of course, I say that, and I can't imagine the number of hours I put into World of Warcraft, and I decided to demit from that. Thank you, Blizzard. Uh, I started in Entropia Universe in December of 2017. So, call it two and a half years. A little over. 
because it was December. I think it was actually December 1st that I logged in for the first time. Learned some hard lessons, figured the game out. And then in June of 18 is when I started making content for real. And well, never looked back. Now I've, I've got something like two, 150 or 160 Entropia Universe videos. Um, and it's all gameplay. I mean, there's a lot of tutorial videos and stuff like that as well, but no, I don't go in and just, you know, have you stare at my face and do things. I've been actually tempted to do, like if I ever get an apartment, I want to furnish it and then maybe bring in some of the more well-known players like Serial Overdrive and War Spade and do like a, a Ruben Report style round table. We just discuss things in the game. And, you know, just like daily issues, that sort of thing. I always thought that would be a, a unique way to use the platform and a cool way to do things, but uh, it, one, it never materialized. It takes a lot of organization. Um, I still might do it eventually. I'm coming up with, with, I have thoughts about stuff like, you know, but I also have people I know in the Fallout universe that um, I could do the same thing. And I have the manor there that I built using the camp system where we could sit down at the game and just have a round table discussion. But for the time being, I enjoy what I do here. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. In the two and a half years I've been playing this, I firmly believe this platform is sorely underutilized. I 100% believe that. And my hope is that Mindark will find ways to better to encourage players to use the platform in more diverse ways because you've got the the big three uh professions crafting mining hunting but the number i'm, I'm out of the 1.1 million active users that this game has or this platform has i'm pretty sure no less than 20 percent of them just use it as a social platform they may not even do any of the three, the big three, or they'll hang out in the sweat fields and they'll sit there sweating. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's a bit dull, but because I've done it, but there's nothing wrong with it. But they'll just sit there sweating and they'll chat. You want to find a really cool community to just sit and chat with folk? Go do sweating in the sweating fields of, Port, of uh, Club Royal. You know, and, and believe me, you don't get any grindier than sweating mobs in this game. Like, there, there is no comparison. But they just sit there and they sweat and they chat and it's, it's a fairly good time. And for the most part, I mean, you get, you get your off days and you'll get days where people aren't talking. And you'll get days where you've got so many bots that someone gets irritated, grabs a train of mobs, tells all the active players to run, which we always do, and then all laugh at all the bots as they get run over by the mobs and the mobs turret themselves. But yeah, no, there's 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 plenty of potential here. You could you can run events. Uh on Monria they used to have a I believe it was Monria, they used to have a fashion show. And I think there's still a runway I, I know for a fact there's a runway somewhere. I it's not on Monria. I think it it's either here on Calypso or it's on Arcadia. Like, I shit you not, there is a runway for a fashion show. And they just don't use it. They just don't use it. There's an octagon in Twin Peaks, which is, would be an amazing event to have people in the stands. It would be all, like, UFC style, you know, maybe Power Fists only, so that because no one's going to have a skill in it. You know, do some non-lootable PvP. Have a have a prize, you know, have a, a gun or a sword or something for a prize, or even ped, and just hold an event. Now I know you, the octagon's going to be a bit tougher because anyone can wander into it. You can't really keep people out of it, but if you got a couple of Ubers there staring, standing guard with an you know an LR fifty five, and someone runs in when it's not their turn, they can just. 
one shot him. But I mean, this is an, thankfully in Entropia Universe, we don't have a whole lot of trolls that would do shit like that. Yeah, so Power Fists, um, it's a type of glove. Global! 13 ped. Ah, uh, 14. Oh no, 13. I was right. Uh, so it's a glove, and it in this game, it's got an armored plate over it, and it sends an electrical shock down the plate when you hit something to do extra damage. In, in other games, it's usually very similar. I think in Fallout, it's more of a hydraulic, where you when you hit something, it sends hydraulic force through to, in, to increase the amount of impact you're creating. Unfortunately, the only power fists I've ever really found are the TT power fists, the one from the from the trade terminal, the basic. And so you can't hunt a whole lot with it except at really low level, and it's got a low TT value, which is both good and bad. The good of it is, you know, anyone can afford it. But the bad of it is, is that it burns out quickly. So if you're out for a normal hunt, you got to carry three of them on you anyway. I don't know how efficient they are. I haven't really taken the time to... Well, of course, they get more efficient the more skills you have. So that's... There's that as well. But you just... You don't see very many of them. So maybe I'll do like a whole... A whole live stream of Power Fist hunting just to kind of expose them. I do have a video on Power Fist buried in my Entropia Universe play, playlist. Um... I find them to be interesting. Extremely short range. Like, you gotta, like, I tow it with a long sword. You gotta be, like, face on face to use a power fist with some of these mobs because of the way their, their hitboxes are set up. I'm pretty sure I had my, my nose buried in the uh, tusks of this one dyke, but I wasn't sure if I was punching him or kissing it. It's like, it, it's, it, it was just, yeah. <laughs> It's like, I'm going to cuddle you while I try to kill you. Bang, bang. So here's a question I've been dying to ask. And I, I know that no one from Mindark... Well, no, I can't say that. I don't know that anyone from Mindark watches my channel. But in case anyone does, why is it every creature on Calypso has six eyes? I mean, see, look, look at this. is This is a Kerberos, and they're they're a fairly low key species, right? Herbivores. I'm pretty sure we we can do a whole thing with the um, Investifo here real quick. Oh, whoops. Um, probably help if I had the right thing equipped. Haha. Uh -huh. Um. Oh. That's why. So, peculiar species mimics the appearance of a far more dangerous creature, the Ocilium, the scary and confused predators. Okay, so that's another Calypsin creature. Um, Batesian mimicry. Oh, it doesn't explicitly say they're herbivores, but judging by the way they act, they're, they're probably herbivores. They're, they're basically a strange cross between an elephant and, well, they're basically elephants with spines. Except they've got six eyes. So now they've been crossed with a spider. No, and, and everything on this planet has been crossed with a damn spider except the drones. Yes, danger hugs, right? Because they all have six eyes. Like, everything on this planet has six eyes. Except, perhaps, Proterions, because they've got, like, eye tusks, but they've got round mouths, and that's just creepy. I'll be back in, like, ten seconds, guys. I got a fatherhood moment.
Thank you for your patience, everyone. I am back. The fatherhood moment has been accomplished. You know, and it's funny, because in... If, you, if you've ever watched my playthrough of We Happy Few, there are several comments on, you know, because We Happy Few, they're in kind of a drug-addled world, and they're on this thing called Joy, and everyone's like, ugh. And, um, well, actually, no, they're, like, super happy for no, no reason. But as people lose their minds, they're like, oh, my God, the eyes, the eyes. Well, guess what? This is what they're seeing. This is the nightmare fuel that they are seeing. Elephants with six eyes. Why do elephants need to have six eyes? And I don't find this particularly horrifying. They're actually kind of cute, but just, like, it, it's weird to see an elephant with six eyes. Yeah, I know I know spiders have eight eyes. But it's the closest thing I could think of. Because to my knowledge, I don't know that any other creatures except arachnids have multiple sets of eyes. Like, humans have two eyes. Insects have two... Uh, they're, they're compound eyes, but there's two of them. Right? And, like, a spider will have eight eyes, some of which are simple and some of which are compound. Which gives them a wide field of vision on various spectrums. And I believe they can actually see deep into the ultraviolet and infrared spectrums, which is just crazy. And then you have Kerberos, which have six eyes. Which all appear to be simple. But I don't even know what their range of vision is. They have no... Like, they have no iris they're just green which is very similar to the way a spider's eye looks it's just one color are they compound are they simple is it a combination do they see an odd spectrums you know for all i know kerberos don't have any ears and they see sound which is an actual thing believe it or not And if you get an antenna embedded into your skull, you can hear color. I wish I was making that up. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting really weird about creatures in a video game, but I'm curious. I'm not bitching about the design choices of my narc. I'm just genuinely curious as to why they decided to do creature design the way they did. It's not bad. It's very unique. Doesn't mean that it's not odd. <laughs> it's alien. That's the word. It's, it's very alien. So maybe that's maybe that's what they were aiming for is because we we as humans expect everything to always operate the way they do here on Earth. Because we have yet to, to discover life on other planets, although, you know, the signs are out there, and boy, when the Pentagon's like, yeah, we have no freaking clue what was flying through the airspace, that's that's a sign. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, that would be my guess, is that they have synesthesia. Now, I mean, obviously... They could have... Oh, wait, you know what? Oh, no, that's another spike. See, there's no... I can't tell if that's a spike or an ear. Not, like, right here. Oh, crap. It, this, hang on. Let me, let me kill another one and take a look at it before it despawns. We're going to do an autopsy on a Kerberos. This is the compelling content you come to my channel to watch. This right here might be an ear or it might be a spike. I can't tell. If it's an ear, fair enough. If it's a spike, where do they hear from? You know, they could hear from their nose. Their, their hearing receptors could be in their nose. You know, they're an alien species. They may not work the way we do. Now, I assume that all life on planets that are functionally similar to Earth will have similar uh, evolutionary construction principles because they are particularly adapted to survival in environments. And Calypso's environment is largely temperate to semi-tropical. 
which makes sense. And so creatures would adapt to that type of an environment. Now, Kerberos in particular tend to walk on two legs or four. They are likely herbivores, although maybe they eat small rodents that we otherwise wouldn't encounter. They're definitely megafauna because they're huge. They're not particularly aggressive unless you get too close to them. And they can definitely hurt something because they've got those big spiked forelimbs. And, and I know I'm overanalyzing things and people are leaving. But if they can't hear the way we hear, they've got to be able to... Um, they have to be able to process sound somehow because that is a survival mechanism. Being able to hear your surroundings and know where predators are. So, so yeah, that, that's my two cents on the evolutionary um, oddities of the Kerberos. <laughs> I mean, hell, the ability to detect sound is more important than being able to see in most species. This is why dogs are likely to be colorblind, but can hear really stupid well and can smell even better. And I'm willing to bet with a schnoz like that, these Kerberos can probably smell everything. They can probably smell what I ate for dinner three weeks ago on my breath if I didn't brush my teeth, and I do brush my teeth. Um, my avatar brushes his teeth too. I need to write War for Mobs for you. You know, I tried to convince a friend of mine, Derek Knight, to do an EU, because he's played EU. I tried to convince him to create a, a stream or a, a YouTube channel where he um, channeled Steve, uh, Steve Irwin and just did like whole skits on different mobs in Entropia Universe. But no, that's that's not a bad idea. And with the codex, at least on Calypso, I'd be able to use that as a way to really kind of uh, use that as a as a starting point and just write lore and like taxonomy and stuff like that. I think it would be good fluff. I'm not sure if my narc would consider it canon. In fact, they probably wouldn't. Although my narc's been pretty good about you know, accepting additions to the lore from the fans, as long as it doesn't dis, um, really? My phone just fell off my table on its own. Again. It's been sitting in the same spot for like an hour. Ghosts. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's not a, t that's not a bad idea. I could put the profiles up on mcbainmanor.com, which is my website for those of you who don't know about it. You know, after, after the live stream or keep me in the background, go to mcbainmanor.com and you'll find all of my written content. Um, I am making an effort to produce an article every week. I'm, I'm back on the writing every week train. I fell off of it for like six months, so sorry about that. But, you know, life happens. Uh, but that would not be a bad use of my time. Create a, a section of mcbainmanor.com that's all just creature war. Alex, that's not a bad idea. I might I might just do that. Considering I just rambled about it for what? 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. 
We are up to seven people. Hey guys, this, if you have a moment, could you do me a favor and just smash the like button for me? Just, just smash it as hard as you can. It'll help me get me up in the YouTube algorithm and have, help people to find my channel. We're, we're on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time, but it's a slow grind. Anything you can do can help. And if you could, if you feel like it's worth doing so, please consider sharing this video. One share is worth a thousand likes. And it gets me, it helps me to overcome the algorithm. I really appreciate the help. Oh, I absolutely could, but I think my YouTube, when, when I am drive for content, because I already have quite a bit of content planned out for my EU videos for a bit. But when I get off of the um, the more motivational kick in EU and bring it back to McBain moments, that's not a bad idea. And I might just do that. Because there's there's plenty to be had. You know, do a whole discussion on each creature. And there's it's not like we are for lack of fauna in this game. We have a ridiculous amount of fauna in this game. I want to know how the hell I ended up with Protarion in my codex. This thing's a beast. Like, this does not do it justice. These things are enormous. It could step on me and it would never know I was there. And it's got these gigantic... Look at that. That is just disturbing. You don't get more alien than that. Hulk smash, right? Hulk smash the like button. And I cut you. Silence, I cut you. How are we doing for loot? I know we got that one global. 55.62 pet and animal muscle oil. I think it's only going for like 103. Oh no, it's back up to 104. That's good. That is good. I think that... Yeah, I'm still selling my last batch of animal muscle oil. And it is up, I think, for a straight 104, to be honest with you. So if you need animal muscle oil, go hit the auction house and buy the, the stock I put up. Uh, I'm also packing 70 summer crates, strong boxes. So if you're interested, uh, let me know. Scotty, good to see you. So for those of you who are not familiar with him, Scotty C93 just passed me in subs. Go check out his channel, and if you aren't subscribed to him, make sure you subscribe to him. Oh, heck no, freaking Regan. No, uh, it all depends on the loot pool size for the average for the mob on average. If you're hunting L2 Kerberos, I've gotten five ped globals which is kind of silly in my opinion but i get it the the global is based on the total loot potential of the mob not the actual return now to my knowledge no mob will produce a global that's less than five ped Uh, it's going well so far. We've gotten to get some good loot. This is the first time I've actually been hunting for like actual loot in a long time. Grinding up my short blade skills for the moment. Um, I, mean, I am going to have to go back to Lower Space Shop and pick up the rest of the LB35s that he made for me. Because he made them for me. I need to make sure that I support him for doing so. Um... 
and I would like to do some more at level hunting, but I'm saving my weapons for migration. And it's coming quick. I think we're about, when is migration? I think we're seven days out. I think migration starts on the seventh. Let me see if I can't find it. Media. Let's see if it's on planetcalypso.com. News. Because the they should be no mentioning the pheromone levels. The moles are back. No, they haven't even announced it officially yet. So. I've heard rumor that migration starts on the 7th. It might be as late as the 14th. Um. Well, like the first time I did migration, Scotty, I think it was just like the month of August, but they've been expanding it, I believe. And migration is my favorite event of the year. It really is. And you just, you hunt long tooth. I hunt long tooth and you have a good time. And I actually did one of them where I just used this and I burned ped. Not as bad as I thought I was going to, but I did burn ped just to get the skills. And I think in the long run, I ended up benefiting from it. But it was a it was a very interesting um, it was a very interesting time because I did I think my first migration was almost all level twos or level threes. I hunted up by um, Fort Zeus. Let's see if I can't find it here. Where they almost always have. I think they've always had the low levels at Fort Zeus. Is it Zeus? Because it's way out here in the middle of nowhere. I'll try to locate it. It's Monopolis. Camp Caravan. Fort Zeus, I was right, yep. And they have all the low level long tooth up here at Fort Zeus. And you just hunt them. And I ground out my early iron missions there and then I went into the, the higher level iron missions and I ended up moving along the migration path. And for those of you who are not familiar with the migration path, I gotta find it again, here it is. This light colored path it's light colored because that's where the long tooth all migrate. It kind of ends here, but they do travel more up into this area and around uh, Camp Ith or Fort Ithaca. But it's all long tooth during the migration. You just follow the path and you will find the level that works for you. And it's longer than that because it, it, it curls around and like goes all the way through uh, this area. I don't know where it starts. I don't remember where it starts. They put out a map every year. You can see all of the different specialty zones. This right here, Corinth Beach Estates, just insane houses. And over here, which are the Corinth West Estates, they haven't sold any of them yet. They're they're all still owned by Mindark. It's like Mindark, put those houses on the markets. I want to buy one. It is a good time to be an Entropian. It's always a good time to be an Entropian, in my opinion. Now that Summer Mayhem's winding down and we're getting ready for the, uh, for me, it's, it's the, 
I kind of consider migration to be my quote-unquote entropian new year. So after migration, I always traditionally go back to Cyrene. And so that's my plan, is to do migration and then travel back to Cyrene. And I'll be on Cyrene for a while, probably a month or two. And then I'll come back to Calypso for a while. I might even travel to Arcadia. And then I will go out to back to Monria. And the last time I was on Monria, I was on Monria for like two or three months. I love Monria. And they're they're doing a lot of good stuff there. Cyrene, I think, has been doing a lot of growth. I'm actually tempted to skip migration and just go straight to Cyrene. No, I don't I don't want to fight the Ripper Snappers that I can't reach. I want to shoot the Kerberos I can. I am really hoping that once migration is over, Mindark will roll the um, Codex missions out for every planet. I think a one year, you know, trial period is good enough. You know, they got the advantage of having the codex. They got the money out of it they needed. It's time to promulgate it to all of the planets so that they can get advantage out of it too. Because that's really going to be the thing that draws people to other planets. I mean, the loot does and the loot tables do. But if you have a planet that you haven't completed because you've got a lot of completionists in this game. You don't get more grindy the Entropia universe and they just added an even better completionist element to it because it's extremely measurable. You're going to find people on Cyrene, you're going to find people on Toulon, you're going to find people on Next Island. Like planets that have never seen a lot of love are just going to get people there to complete the Codex missions. You've never been to another planet, Scotty? Dude, how long have you been playing? Like, I will personally taxi you. Arcadia is a good planet. I actually went through the trouble of, um... Farming the sweat to get the passport. I didn't buy it. That took like a month. It was a month well spent, but it was a long ass month. Come home from work every day. And my son's like, dad, you're doing that again. Yeah, yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Cyrene needs some, some people to be born on Cyrene. Cyrene and Monria are the two places that I personally support. And want to see more players on. And yeah, I come to Calypso and I play on Calypso because this is where the major events happen. But, you know, I spent a lot of time on Maria. I spend a lot of time on Cyrene every year. And can the development team of Cyrene in particular step up their game? Global! Uh, 19 pet. 18 pet. They only called it 18. <laughs> Put these two together, it's 18. You put up another one there, it's 19. But th that's okay, Mind Dark. I'll let it go. Oh, okay. No, I'm. I'm partially tempted to jump to Cyrene immediately and jump back when migration starts. They haven't even announced it yet. They'll probably announce it tomorrow. Like the last time I was there, I was there last year and I did the whole um, epic fat mission. And for those of you who are not in Tropia Universe gear Gurus, fat means fast aid pack, not what most people think it means in this context. Fast aid pack is uh, 
it's a first aid pack technically but they call it fast aid i believe is the way it's it's stated in the game it's a tool it's a healing device this is a fast aid pack this is the this is the tt one and i've got one from gauntlet and i've got the one from Cyrene. but i don't use them i use mind force because i am a mind force wizard that doesn't cast a whole lot of mind force spells I'm actually working on my mind force. I should be doing more of it out here, but. Actually, let's, let's compare, like what? Info. Let's go to my uh, combustive attack nano chip. Yeah, you can see the damage difference. This is much more on par with a higher level weapon, so let's lock that into place. Find another mob to kill. Preferably before it drowns. Like, that's that's the one thing. Every mob in this game is dumber than a box of rocks. We're going to walk into the water until we can't breathe and then we're going to drown. Because that makes sense. Dummy. Yeah, so this this is much higher than anything I'm packing here. So instead of the short blade, what does my long blade do? It's lower than my adjusted long blade, which is admittedly going to be higher anyway. Oh, I forgot about the protecting ability. But even if I take the, the amplifier off of it, I'm still way outpacing the damage of the combustive attack nano chip, both of which way outpace the um, this the emic. But just as an example, what's what's oh? I guess I could be doing some work on my combustive attack and still have it be worthwhile. good to know yes fireballs go boom you know I saw a uh, an adjusted uh, it was a it was a gif I'm pretty sure and I know there are people who insist it's called GIF, including the person who invented them. And I understand he's the one who invented it, but G's are hard. It's a GIF, not a GIF. Especially since it's for graphical, not graphical. Sorry, pet peeve. Um, it's Family Feud. And it's a D&D &D context. And he says, you know, you've got an enemy in the room. What's the, what, you, what do you cast? And... The person, the contestant it goes to says fireball. And of course you've got all the people cheering and because it's so out there, like she cracks up, everyone's dying laughing. Her opponent dies laughing. He turns says survey says, and it's the first one on the list. Because everyone knows if you cast fireball in a crowded room, everybody, including the caster, dies. Right? It's 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 the literal nuclear option in an enclosed space. And, and a lot of people who play wizard do it. <laughs> and so Entropia Universe gave us the ability to cast Fireball. They, did they think they were, we weren't going to use it? I mean, you can't... It's not the it's not the same as the D&D &D Fireball, where it's basically the equivalent of nuking it from orbit, but you can see it from there. I do need to take the time and find an amp for my um, for my mind force chips, which I think the majority of them are all kinetic. But damage is damage. 
And if it increases the efficiency of that damage, that's all that really matters. Because of my amps on my blades, I'm actually doing a lot better loot-wise overall. I'm not using the higher level trauma amplifier. But I am doing the regen. And I've got the lower level trauma amplifier. This one wouldn't be able to take my higher level trauma amplifier. But I could put a much higher level melee trauma amplifier on this one. I just need to be I just need to have the ped to spend. I need to be willing to spend the ped. Which are two very separate things, both of which are very real. And I haven't decided if I'm ready to do that yet. That's one of the reasons I haven't bought an apartment yet. And an apartment on the world that um, I wanted came available. But there was something else I wanted to buy as well, which was frankly a lot more expensive. Um, on Monria. And they have huge apartments on Monria. They are ridiculously large. Neverwinter because the shop clerk told me, gave me a lift. <laughs> Scotty, I have someone to introduce you to named Roy. I think the two of you will get along famously. Roy plays a rogue. Is Roy in the channel right now just lurking? Because that would be amusing as hell. See, to a certain extent I can understand that, but at the same time, being as if, if I had, if character class was something that was real, like IRL, because of my fighting style I would probably be classified as a rogue. Yeah, Scotty plays a, a wizard by the looks, but you're right, no, you're, you put two rogues together, people die. You're absolutely right. Although, Kat, to be fair, since since we're fencers, in the D&D context, I guess all, you know, you, me, Kenrick, we're all technically rogues. And, you know, people die because we're killing each other. <laughs> and then when we're done killing each other, we have drinks. What is this? Is this just a rock formation? We're gonna run into some ripper snappers, so just be prepared for that. See, ripper snappers. Thankfully, we don't have to breathe. Ripper snappers are basically piranha. It's a rock formation with a light in it. That's interesting. Although, maybe it's flora. I don't think so, but look at the way they're growing out of the ground. So yeah, that's interesting. Did I already have the Ripper Snapper on my list? Probably not. 
No, but I'm already at 52.5%. Let me just watch. He goes underwater for no reason. And then... He drowns. Sad loss of potential XP. Cat... What's your secondary on a normal occasion when it's not the spoon? Yeah, I think you'd be classified as a monk in most RPG uh, contexts, Scotty. I'm not familiar with the Blade Dancer subclass as a uh, as a and d reference, but I can dig it. I think I think most of us fencers would probably fall under that subclass. You know, that makes me to think I really miss dagger fights, knife fighting. That was a lot of fun. I miss fencing in general, but I... Now that that's been said, I really miss knife fighting. It's... Okay, before YouTube decides to ban this particular live stream. It's in a fencing context. We're all wearing safety gear. It's okay. After the after the fight's over, we tend to have drinks together. It's cool. There are safety tips on the weapons. They're very sharp. We're all wearing safety gear. It's insured. It's legit. It's okay. I'm not talking about going out and shanking someone in the street. I know someone's going to be, you know, staring at their screen funny saying, he just said he likes knife fighting. Great, Julian. Good job. Ranks 13 and boom. What? What? Come on, Mind Arc. 100%. Ah. Uh. Oh, this is what happens when you play with basis points, kids. They round the number, but I'm still below the threshold. Oh, that's painful. Good job, my narc. You got me. Bastards. And there it is. What have we got for options? Aim, anatomy, athletics, combat reflexes, heavy melee. I'm not worried about that. Long blade's not worried about that for obvious reasons. Um, so athletics really goes into your HP. Anatomy is your healing and HP. Combat reflexes and dex. I think that's where you're evade. I think those both help your evade. I'm going to go into dex. The more evade I have, the less time, the less armor decay I'm going to end up with. And I almost want more of that than even the, um... The perception, which affects your looter skills, which give you better loot. 
because the looter skills are going to come. If I'm not taking hardly any decay on armor, or if I don't need armor to begin with, then my overall profits are going to be a lot better. You are how stupid. <laughs> Right? I'm sure it's just the rounding rules that made it look like that, but still, it's just like, come on, Mind Arc. If I'm that close, just give me the damn cookie, okay? Or call it You know, I have to admit, when I first started live streaming in January, because I did, my first live stream was, uh, it was Entropia Universe on Monria, and I was doing, um, Ring in the New Year. So I guess technically it was, uh, G uh, December 31st is when I did it. I rang in the New Year on my very first live stream. I didn't imagine how much fun it would be to live stream. Like, I enjoy doing the videos, I make all the content, the curated content is awesome. It's a lot of fun doing this. I never imagined it would this be this much fun. And I want to thank everyone who watches my channel when I do this. I really appreciate it. Your support makes it worthwhile, and the dialogue that you put in the chat. Um, everyone who came to my Subnautica what, uh, Let's Play through. And there are some who haven't come back after Subnautica was over, which is kind of a shame, but I get it. But it's just been a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes in the future. I haven't decided on doing another one-player game yet. I've tried my time at Porsche. Not a lot of people were interested in it. It's an extremely slow-paced game. Um, I enjoyed the game, but it was another. It was, it's a grind fest. And if I'm going to be doing grinding right now, I'm probably going to play a game that I've invested a lot of time in already, such as EU. And I'm not bitching at Porsche. I actually really enjoyed the, the gameplay. But again, it's, it's, it's an extremely slow-paced game. Um, eventually, I'll probably run across another one-player game while I want to do a live stream of it. Um, I'm kind of backing off from the, the Let's Plays for a little bit, kind of niching down. Now that's, the, that's the old adage, niche down to blow up, and I'm hoping to kind of do better in the algorithm, kind of tweak my channel so that it works better. So, like, I, I haven't done any Borderlands 3 in a while, I haven't done any of my time in Porsche, and, and maybe that's to my detriment, but at the same time, I need to kind of focus on the, the core the core of my channel, which is Entropy Universe and Fallout 76. You know, maybe I'll swap it around and do a Fallout 76 live stream at some point. I think that would be a lot of fun. But we'll, we'll see what happens. In a lot of ways, I agree with you, Scotty. And, and my issue was, is if you're going to live stream effectively, you have to have a schedule. And I was so afraid I would not be able to keep a schedule. And somehow, some way, the universe has come together so that I've been able to keep a, a relatively good schedule. Um, and that's always beneficial. Yes, focusing on EU is a is is a good idea in my opinion. Having some uh, some.
some diverse content is good too. But having that focus really helps, I think. And for me, what it what I've noticed is is um no matter how many content creators are out there, because relative to the player base, there are so few of us who make EU content, we're going to drive a lot of people to watch our content because we're making EU content. But it doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing Fallout 76 content. You know, I've got a, a focus in that, and, it's, and I'm producing it very similar to a Let's Play, but I screw around a lot too. Like, um, last Saturday I put out a video where I'm just robbing people's camps. Because I won't do, like, piracy in EU because there's real-world consequences. But in Fallout 76, I play a bad guy. Like, I've never played a bad guy in any game ever that I can think of where other people were involved. Like, I play Grand Theft Auto. Uh, speaking of which, I've got a Grand Theft Auto 5 playthrough I've been doing on the side. Not on, not on stream, not recording, nothing like that. I've been playing GTA 5 on a time, from time to time because that's... That's a, a stress release. You know, I don't want to compete against anyone, but I want to do things that are ostensibly, you know, theoretically evil. So you jump into Grand Theft Auto and you steal cars. <laughs> Go racing through the night and just crash into shit. No. But, um, you know, steal cars, rob places. It's a lot of fun. And I do it in Fallout 76 because I play a bad guy. Uh, play a raider. But the only thing that they're really losing in that is a little bit of gameplay time. And they are perfectly capable of going to my camp and doing the same thing as well. Because I'm not at a point where I can lock shit. But in this game, I could never be a pirate. Like, I don't go to lootable PvP unless I absolutely have to. Space requires me to. And I don't go out of my way to loot other people in space. Um, I have fired back on pirates, and I have successfully I successfully shot down one. And I will always fire back if fired upon, or if I suspect that they're going to fire upon me. And I have done a Mexican standoff where I knew I didn't stand a chance of winning. But I'm not going to go out of my way to steal people's shit in the EU because it's real money. You know, it's not just pretend, it's not caps, it's not, you know, whatever, fake gold, money, what have you. This is real cash, and that, that brings a totally different set of ethics in. I'm not playing the bad guy in EU, I'm playing me, because that's we have an avatar in EU, we don't have a character. And that's the difference. This is my avatar. In Fallout, that is my character. When playing D and D, I'll play an evil character if if the campaign calls for it. I'll play an evil character. I got no problem being the bad guy. I'll play a rogue. I'll play a necromancer. I'll play someone who is not good at heart. That's role play. That's fun. But you know what? At the end of the day, I haven't taken money out of people's pockets. I haven't actually hurt someone, other than maybe their feelings a little bit. And that's why I think that this game is so much different from any other game, is that it is real life. It's just real life digitized with, you know, monsters. How deep out there am I? I'm pretty far out. Oh, I ended up wandering to the other side of the lake. Okay. I, can, I should be able to mosey back. We'll take out these two guys, and then we'll start uh, walking back toward Boreas. Up here. Oh, you know what? I know a lot of people haven't seen it. And it's not that far away. Athena's spaceport. That's a large area. Okay, let's let's call the hunt. I'm 
and we're going to do a little visual tour. Headed to Athena Spaceport. And that's totally fair, Scotty. That is totally fair. Um, I really enjoy engaging in PvP and Fallout. I'll, I've tried doing PvP in Entropia. It's just, it's not engaging because there's no skill involved. You just kind of sh take pot shots at each other until one of you falls over. But in Fallout, there's like, there's a lot of skill involved. You have to be able to move correctly. It's different. And so I'll instigate PvP. You know, player of just don't want to PvP. We don't play PvP. That's just the way it works. Um... But I play a raider, and raiders are bad guys. And I'm very clear that I'm a raider. And there are plenty of ways to prevent raiders from being raiders in that game, and Bethesda is making it harder and harder all the time to be the bad guy. So I don't feel I don't feel terrible about doing it in that game. If I was a pirate in this game, no. Nah. No, bro, not happening. So this, my friends, is Athena Spaceport, and I have never really taken a lot of time to explore this, but I think it's incredibly cool. Like, I don't even know what this building is for. And I don't know if this is going to end up being a no-vehicle zone, or if we can fly over. Oh, there's a televator on top of this building. Oh, I bet that's a landing pad. Yep, these are all landing pads. Because I'm pretty sure Athena's spaceport itself is a no-fly zone. Let's try turning in. Pretty sure once we hit the landmass, we're going to hit an invisible wall. No, maybe not. At one point, I'm pretty sure this was. This is pretty cool looking. Like, look at that. Look at, like, like, that is awesome. It's been so long since I've been here. I basically picked up the te uh, teleporter here and then jetted. But they got this, they've got this cool stairway. Now he's down to ground and all the bridge work. They just did a phenomenal job. Shit like this is why I love EU. Mindark put a lot of work into this game. Yes, this particular ship, and it's a class of ship, it's not the name I gave it. Um, the Sleep Near is a class of ship oh I guess you can't interact with this um of their jump ships basically where are drop ships that you can fly both in space and on uh, planets they're very common for flying around planets because they have a very low fuel consumption much lower than the quad wing but especially in their sp in space they're extremely slow so if you're in space, a sleep near is basically pirate food. In a PvP zone, they're really good for bombing players. As Lord Spade, you know, expose to me when he did exactly that in Orthos. Like, I've never explored one of these houses. Mega screen UGC. But let's see what we've got. Oh. Oh, this is an estate? What? No joke. 
private, not invited. Hub culture valet. I didn't even know there was housing here. Let's see if the human furnished flourishing universe estate. Private, not invited. There's the teleporter there. I'm hoping one of these buildings is public, just so we can go in and look. I'm not gonna whip around to the side to find out this one. I'm just gonna try going in the front door and if it says no, then it's a no. You know, not much else we can do about that. Oh, it's letting us in. What? Check this out. Oh, this is a public space anyway. There's an auctioneer and a TT in here. It looks like they had planned something for this because there's this counter space. So I don't know if this was meant to be a private estate or what. I guess now I got to see if there's an estate terminal for this. Yeah, there is. Planet Employability Estate. So I don't know, guys. That's that's interesting. What does that say? I know this is just one of the oh yeah, Entropia Partner, your trusted pet partner since 2013, yada yada. Speaking of selling, I'm I've got these 70 strong boxes. If anyone wants to make me an offer, let's chat. Mining guild rep, technician, they they sell blueprints, daily token trader. Oh wow, combat token trader. So the only thing they don't have here is the mayhem token trader, essentially. Um, let's see what we got for loot. Convert our ammo. 110.56 pet in loot. Pretty good. Repairs. 29.48 in repairs. Which is not bad at all. Um, of course, we're going to have decay on our amps, or not our amps, but our weapons and stuff like that. But I'm not terribly worried about that for the moment. But yeah, I think we had a we had a pretty decent evening. We had a pretty decent evening with markup. I think that's going to make up the majority of the decay, if not all of it. So I'm not too worried about that. Oh, good. These are pretty close to being able to sell. And what's their, uh, 104. Considering the speed at which you don't get them, I was hoping they had a slightly bigger markup. I know, I'm whining. Sorry, not sorry. But like these, you get the market value. They got good markup and nothing sold, but you gather them at the rate of a snail. So... Okay, guys, you know what? It's 1030. I'm going to call it here. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers. One subscription at a time, so make sure you subscribe. And if y'all could just hit that like button, smash the like button, please. I'd really appreciate it. Really helps me out. I really appreciate all the support. It's been a fun time tonight. I'm looking forward to Friday when I can see you all again. And we'll see you in the next one.